Good morning everyone and welcome to Nsunduzi Hospice Association. Uh, we are taking the opportunity of Jenny's, nurse sister Jenny's uh, retirement to take a few moments with her to ask her some questions and to uh, allow her the opportunity to leave hospice with some ideas and a legacy for the future. Sister Jenny Reynolds has been with us for almost 15 years if I'm not mistaken. That's right. Sir. And uh, we are very pleased with uh, the time that she has spent with us, the contribution she has made, and we wish her well for the future. Please note that we are not wearing masks, but that's simply to the purposes of this interview. So, Jenny, just to, to ask a few questions as we engage one another this morning. Being a hospice nurse can be challenging emotionally. Why did you choose to follow this profession? I think um, I didn't really choose hospice, it seemed to choose me. Uh, so many years ago now, I can't actually remember the moment when I decided that this is the work that I wanted to do, but it was just something that I knew I wanted to do, and around about that time, a post came up, and even though it meant taking on a half day salary and there were implications there, I, I took the jump, and um, I've never really looked back since I started that, and, um, I find my niche here and it's been the most rewarding work I've ever done. Thank you for that, thank you. You've been with St. Lucy Hospice for almost 15 years. For you, what are some of the highlights and the rewarding aspects of your time with uh, us over these past 15 years? Certainly the highlights for me have been the fact that it hasn't been an office job. You get the chance to drive around, um, I've seen some lovely places, we've been to some interesting places. It's a privilege to get to see people in their homes. And I think our families too take pleasure in being able to show us their veggie garden or show us their flowers, sometimes they show us their crafts. So that's certainly been a highlight, um, getting out and about. And I'd say the rewards are mainly that um, we receive so much gratitude. Um, it's certainly not something we expect, but it's not every day that one gets to be called an angel. <laughs> and um, it's just, you know, I, I think hospice fulfills a role that no other organisation fulfills. And we come to people at a time of need, um, and even although we can't alter the, the, the nature of the illness and change the, 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 um, the ultimate prognosis, we can just make a difference in their lives and turn it into a more positive experience. And I think that's one of the most rewarding aspects for me. Thank you. Thank you. Over the, the years, you must have had some challenges, some difficulties. What have been some of these challenges that you faced in your daily activities, visiting patients, and, and being a nurse here at hospice. As you said, it, I mean, it is emotionally um, challenging, it can be stressful, but rather than focusing on that, because we know that, um, maybe focus on a few of the physical challenges, which is a bit more lighthearted. And I said earlier that traveling around is a pleasure, as opposed to being in an office, but certainly um, driving around Maritzburg in midsummer is not such a pleasure, <laughs> with no air con. And it's quite hard to arrive at a patient's house to keep cool and calm when, when you're hot and flustered. Yeah. Um, similarly, you know, Marisburg, you have to be quite fit to be a hospice nurse. Um, there's a lot of up and down parting equipment. Um, Marisburg is quite hilly. Yes. And you certainly often will park your car here and the patient either lives up there or down there. Yeah. And it means navigating semi non existent staircases with an umbrella if it's raining and slippery steps. So that's quite physically challenging. And, um, we always laugh about what we can actually fit into these cars, and as I said, it's a bit like that joke, how many rugby players can you fit in a Mini? It's a case of how much equipment can you actually fit into your Yaris, and it's surprising how much you can fit in, if you know how. Yeah. Um, and I think our last challenge, we've had a few episodes there too, are the four-legged members of, of a family. Um, some dogs are not as welcoming as others, so we have to be careful um, with certain beasts. That we visit. Yeah. Thank you for that. Uh, truly interesting times Very with us. Interesting. Yeah. So, as you prepare to, to relocate, what are one or two things that you would like the community of Peter Maritzburg to know about hospice and the work that, that hospice does? I'm glad I've got this opportunity because I think there's definitely a misconception about hospice and the role we perform. And one of the things I'd like to say that is that hospice is not only for dying. Um, we always say that palliative care begins early on in a prognosis, in a diagnosis, and encourage people to join hospice earlier rather than later and I think to to take on hospice does not mean that you are giving up it certainly is not a, a defeat thing 
And if your doctor refuses to hospice, it also doesn't mean that this is now the end. Um, I think people really need to realize that and that it's so important for us as nurses to be able to build up a relationship with our patients and their families, something that can only be done over time. Um, if we come in at the very end, there's been no opportunity to build up that trust that people are actually able to open up to us and, and share their, um, their concerns and their fears. So that really is, I think, what I'd like to leave for the community, is that it's never too early to have hospice. And so often our patients will say, you know, I wish we'd called you earlier, I wish we'd known about hospice, um, you know, you've really been such a help, and if only we'd been in earlier, it would have made a big difference to them. So hospice and the work, particularly of the nurses in hospice, depends a large amount on the relationship that is established over time. Yes. And so time needs to be given for that relationship to be established, Absolutely. for the care to be uh, as, as beneficial to the patient and the family along, alongside them. Absolutely. So hospice nurse, finally from our side, is a vessel of care and compassion. What legacy or what is the legacy that you wish to leave behind as you prepare to leave us? for your colleagues, for the community, for the organization as a whole. I said, I certainly don't know if there's so much of a legacy to leave, but there are a few things that I could share, particularly for my colleagues, that I think are important. And one is that it's really important to care for yourself. Um, as we said time and time again, it is a very stressful and emotionally draining job. And you need to take time to forget about work, um, to clear the cobwebs. For me, that was always very physical, running or mountain biking, and I don't think my colleagues would be <laughs> too keen on that. But anything that is interest of interest to you that gives you a chance to, to have a break completely from your work. Um, and secondly, I say to my colleagues, you need to be kind to each other. You know, we're all human and we all have our bad days. Um, and it's important to give each other space to be irritable and grumpy, rather that than go out and see your patients with that same irritation. Um, and thirdly, I think it's important to be quite broad-minded. I know, um, we can get very involved in our individual tasks at hospice, but we need to realize that there is a bigger picture. Um, and certainly hospice can't fulfill the entire role of providing palliative care. So we need to be prepared to get involved in training so that other healthcare professionals get involved in palliative care. Um, and lastly, and I've seen this over 15 years, a lot of change has happened and sometimes it's been hard to accept, but I think change is inevitable and people need to accept change and move with the times and be prepared to adapt, because hospice will only survive if we are prepared to adapt. But at the same time, we must never forget the key, the key role of hospice and what our main aim is. Thank you for those very kind words. Uh, the legacy of the work that you have offered here at hospice, and the legacy of hospice in the lives of the community is very important, that we are there to help as much as we can, and that we, in order to do that, we do need to, to take care of ourselves in some way as necessary also. So thank you for that. Thank you for also for mentioning the change. Hospice is about growth and that things don't stay the same. It is a movement of change and happening around us and that we need to embrace that as well, particularly currently with the COVID-19 and all the challenges that it brings about. So Absolutely. Jenny, on behalf of Imsenduzi Hospice, myself as the CEO, and I'm sure the, the chairperson will have a few words to say uh, next week, um, we wish you well as you relocate and to thank you for the time that you've given us over the last 15 years and all the best for the future. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. Thank you.